Nick Mulvaney, thank you for your time again. Yeah. There's been a bit happening. First, I just want to address this because it's going to be the question on everyone's mind. With Donald Trump heading to his watch party, yes. he's going to declare victory, eh, right? Probably at some point. Um, I, and I, I don't say that lightly, but yes, um, he, he, he should get, even though a couple of networks in this country have now called North Carolina for him, they're on the verge of calling Georgia for him, although I understand talking to you, there's some question about some outstanding ballots in Georgia that may hold up that decision. Uh, it, all eyes now will turn to Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And if Kamala Harris wins those three states, she is the next president of the United States. It sort of now has isolated the attention even more so on those three states. But, yeah, he could go and declare victory. It counts about as much as, you know, him declaring victory. People concede here all the time, and then they wake up the next morning and they've won, and they take back their concession. So it's, it's more of a, of a tradition here than anything else. It doesn't have any legally binding sort of precedent. No, but there'll be some kind... He wants to rev up his followers, right? And then he, there's he the potential does. for him down yes. the road to say, actually, these votes yeah. are not quite right. Yeah. Claiming victory is much easier for Donald Trump than admitting defeat. Yes, I would yeah. admit that. So, when we're looking at the results coming through, what is piquing your interest right now? Kamala Harris continues to trail statewide Democrats. We talked about it the last hour in North Carolina. That model is repeating itself now in Georgia, in Ohio, where she trails a very popular Democrat senator again. Um, and even in Pennsylvania, she's trailing a, a, the popular senator there by about the same two points that we saw in North Carolina last hour. It's almost as if there's a small slice of the Democrat Party, the Democrat voters have said, you know what? We're Democrat, we're voting Democrat, but we just don't know her well enough to pull the ticket for her. And if that 2% margin holds, that could be the margin, uh, uh, that could be the, the difference in all three of those big swing states. Absolutely. And Pennsylvania, right now they're polling pretty much 49-49. So if that 2% falls, that's it. That's exactly right. And the same is true in Michigan and Wisconsin. How significant do you think the numbers we're getting from Georgia right now are? Uh, pretty good. Again, I thought Georgia was an easier win for Donald Trump than North Carolina. So as soon as I saw North Carolina going as hard as it did for, for, for Trump, and again, a couple of networks have called that already. Mm. Again, not that that makes any difference. It's just sort of a, a convention. Um, the fact that I always thought Georgia would be easier for Trump than North Carolina. So if he's winning North Carolina, I'm fairly confident about his, ability, his, uh, his victory in Georgia as well. Okay, what are you watching in the next few hours? Uh, obviously now all eyes are going to turn to the Midwest with uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. Uh, I think the polls have closed there now. They're, they're going to be very slow to count, but I'll be looking for that same differential. So the, the big name Democrats, is Kamala Harris leading those big name Democrats in those states or is she trailing them again? That's, that's the trend that I think is coming out tonight. And with what you're seeing coming out, do you think we're going to get a result quicker than last time? I think we're getting results quicker than we thought we were tonight so far. Uh, North Carolina going this quickly, I think, caught a lot of folks uh, out of attention. It's not like the pollsters made a huge mistake. No. Um, it's not like they're off by 10 points. But, you know, in these races, if you're off by two points, that's, that can be the margin of, of, of victory. So uh, right now, here's how I describe it to people. And I've been on the phone and on TV here in this country. Donald Trump has some good news. Yeah. Kamala Harris has none so far. And last one, uh, because I know Kieran will have a question for you. Iowa. This yes. was the poll that just upended everyone's weekend. When this Not everybody's really weekend, but yes, a lot of people's. <laughs> it was a bad poll. Look, okay. and, and I, I hate to beat up on the on the pollsters. because I don't I don't know her personally, but you can't release a poll two days before an election with nine percent undecided voters. That's so a, for viewers who haven't seen it, this yes. poll it. it said Iowa was going to flip blue. Yes, it had a Kamala Harris up 47 to 44. Which is wild. In a state that everybody had picked for Donald Trump from the very beginning. Um, it's majority rural, very white. It's uh, super Trumpy. Absolutely. And, but you put 47 and 44 together, you get 91, which means they're missing 9% of the vote. And that's just irresponsible as a pollster that late in the game. So we'll be curious. Listen, the, the great thing about this business is that uh, we'll know before too long whether or not that pollster was right or not. Absolutely.